Hi and welcome back to my workshop for part three of my Live Edge River coffee table. We'll be continuing on with the epoxy pour down the middle of the table. So this is a not cut glass cast epoxy resin, really good stuff, slow curing, it takes 72 hours to cure, after 48 hours it's tacky, after 48 hours I should have poured the rest of the epoxy and in hindsight now I've learned I could have poured the entire 35ml in one go because it's a very slow, very low temperature curing epoxy um, so I know it won't exotherm and it's pigmenting really well with a polyester polyurethane translucent pigment that I've purchased um, and typically you're not meant to use that in epoxy I guess the characteristics are different um, however it's it's pigmenting fine with no issues at all and I'm getting a very nice clear translucent color now as I go up the layer I am going to make it darker um, because I don't think it's dark enough and again because it's the first time I've done that I don't know how much pigment to put in there. So next thing I'm going to do is sand the epoxy. I wish I'd have called it after 48 hours because it's annoying I've got to sand it but I want to make sure there's a very good bond to the current epoxy that's there. So we'll get the sandpaper then we'll dust it all down and we'll carry on with the pouring of the resin. Now I need to remove all this dust and make sure that's all gone. Now I'm going to use a tack cloth to start with, just lightly, as much dust as I can, and then I'll go along with a damp cloth to make sure as much is gone as possible. So I've wiped it down with a white damp, damp cloth. Now I'm just drying it nicely. Okay guys, let's get on with the uh, pouring of the next one. Uh, we're doing it by weight. We're going to start with uh, 700 grams of part A. I say this is a not cut glass cast. It's 700 grams. And for 700 grams of part A, the resin, we need 280 grams of part B, the hardener. We're going to mix the colour into here, pigmentation into the part A, and give it a good old mix. So, one, two, three. That's how many I've been using. However, I don't think that's enough colour. Don't think it's dark enough. It looks darker when it's in a litre, but we're not pouring it that thick. I might add another one drop. Let's see what that's like. That's four drops now. Let's mix that in. That's five. We're going to go six, seven. Let's try seven drops total. We've got eight drops of pigment in there now. Now we get the hardener, and the advice from the manufacturer is to pour the resin into the harder, the resin into the hardener. Eight. Scrape out as much as we can. Don't want to waste any. It's not cheap stuff. Going to stir this up into a homogeneous mixture, ensuring that I scrape around the sides, that I get into the corners of the bottom. And uh, I'm going to stir this for about two minutes. Okay, so I've stirred that for more than two minutes. I'm really happy with that. So now I'll decant it into here. And then we will degas. So now we're going to degas. So we get this pot, I'll stick it in my vacuum chamber. I'm sure that one's open. Pump on. Hold that down. Vacuum starting. We'll wait for the vacuum to build and then we'll turn it off and wait for the gases to disappear. Lock that off. And now we'll just wait. Okay, there's not many bubbles left on it now, there's a few. 
but I'm sure when I pour that will go and if there's the odd one or two I can use a torch to just blow them. So let's uh, release the vacuum slowly and actually some of those remaining bubbles are now popping. Okay, I'm going to tighten that back up so I know next time where we are. Let's take that off. Out comes the degassed epoxy. I don't know if you can see, that's got next to no bubbles. It's got no bubbles in the body of it. There's just a few on the surface. So now let's pour. What I'll do is I'll mix up some more and I'll keep pouring. Okay, so we've left this 72 hours. Um, it's now nice and cured. As you can see, it's kind of seeped out the sides here a bit and over there. Um, the reason I need to sand this bit here is obviously it's tinted blue, translucent blue. So whilst there's only a very thin layer, what I don't want to do is coat the entire table with epoxy and then see a light blue tinge there. So I'm just going to sand these bits down close to the river edge there. Um, obviously there's a bit of a dip in here and I think it's basically where I've tried to level this table, it's probably sagging in the middle slightly. Um, that's all I can think, because uh, these boards were perfectly flat, or they weren't perfectly flat. I'm just going to sand these pieces here along the edge. Um, then the next thing to do is rough up this middle piece and then coat the entire table with a coat of epoxy. Probably do several coats, not sure how many yet, um, three or four coats or something like that. So let's just sand these bits down here. <laughs> Okay, so I've sanded out the seepage where it seeped over the sides there. So just before we give it a seal coat, we're going to give it a wipe down with damp cloth to get any sanding dust off. So let's mix up some epoxy to apply a seal coat to the table. So first of all, we're going to prime the roller. Okay, and now we can apply it to the top. So, so I've put the seal coat on, I've allowed it to dry for three days. Now it's time to just give this a sand over to give a keying surface for the then flood coat that I'm going to apply to the top to key to. Now ready to pull the resin. Need a lot more resin, obviously. Spread it out. Okay, so I've well and truly spread that about um, with my notch trowel on the smallest notches. I'm not sure what they are, about two millimeters maybe. Um, there's some air bubbles in there where I've been spreading it all over. I've let it run down the sides and covered all of those. I'm now gonna go over with a heat gun and pop any bubbles that are there.
Okay guys, so the top coat has been on for over 72 hours now. What I need to do now is just denib it all, uh, key the entire surface. I'll go over that with a 120 grit and then I can pour the second top coat on. So let's crack on with that. So we've given the table a sand. I've dusted it off with a microfiber cloth. And just before I go and pour the resin on when I've mixed it, what I'll do is I will use a tack cloth just to um, remove any final dust. So the resin is degassed, guys. Uh, before I go and put the resin on, I'm just gonna give it a quick wiping over with a very lightly wiping over with a tack cloth to remove any dust that might have settled on it whilst I've been waiting. And we'll mix up another one in a minute. We'll spread this one out first. So it's had its second top coat on. What we need to do now is we need to give it a key again with a 120 grit sandpaper and then pour a third top coat on. Okay, we can now pour the resin. This could be the final coat. Thanks for joining me in part three. I look forward to welcoming you back soon when we carry on with the project.